We see it everywhere, in the news, on the latest devices, as part of political agendas, and even in music videos. But what exactly is 5G? The first generation of mobile cellular networks were deployed in the 80s, and unlike cool sitcoms from the same decade, provided pretty unthrilling voice services. Luckily, every decade since, we've seen another generation offering even cooler features, better coverage, and more interesting options. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about TV. Second generation networks turned our analog voices into digital voices and also introduced short messaging. Believe it or not, initially the average American sent only 0.4 texts per month in 1995. Fast forward to today and the average American sends and receives closer to 100 text messages every day. Well, if you can call emojis, gifs and memes, texts. But even more important than messaging, 2G was really the first stepping stone towards mobile services that for the most part could work anywhere in the world. Sorry, CDMA. In 2001, 3G was launched and provided a significant boost in the number of simultaneous calls that could be supported. In addition, 3G added a dedicated data channel, that's for mobile internet, that was introduced in 2G, but with a humongous boost in bandwidth. You know how many ones and zeros are moving between your device and the network. And it allowed us to do so much more with our phones. Whether emailing your friends, surfing the internet, or even watching video. The iPhone, or more importantly, the iPhone 3G, was a major trigger point for people to appreciate what 3G could offer. In addition to providing a new form factor with a big touch screen and virtual keyboard, it allowed us to watch videos, play games, and surf the net more easily, Apple also introduced the most comprehensive application store to date. And this was a huge quantum leap in terms of being able to find and download applications with ease. And it meant I no longer needed to sideload that Yahoo Messenger application onto my dad's phone for him. But with all these new apps came a thirst for even more data. 4G was the first mobile cellular generation designed from the ground up for a data-driven world. It left behind analog and digital voice channels and instead provided gobs and gobs of data bandwidth using the same protocols that the internet is based on. It allowed us to go from downloading low resolution video to real time, high definition streaming. It provided reliable mobile connections for tablets and laptops. And it even proved itself to be a pretty good alternative to DSL or fiber for home broadband service. I mean, that's pretty good, right? 5G is more than just a simple evolution of 4G. 5G is a rethink about what the future digital economy needs from mobile infrastructure. It's about going beyond just people to connecting switches and sensors and businesses and cities and entire industries. 5G will connect us to an internet of things from smartphones and TVs and streetlights and mailboxes to clouds where things like artificial intelligence can be used to process data in new exciting ways. To do this, we need even more data bandwidth than ever before, a more responsive, reliable network, and huge levels of connectivity. I mean, we're talking like one million connections per square kilometer. The good news is that this is all built into 5G's DNA. And that's why 5G is so important for the, for world, the world of tomorrow. Of tomorrow. Thanks for watching. That is fast. Is that 4K? Whoa.